Live, local, late breaking. It's just not a feeling that you want to have like on a campus where you think you're safe. Now it's six, back to normal at UVM. How a suspicious situation over the weekend is raising concerns about emergency alerts on campus. Plus, today is the deadline in New York for healthcare workers to be vaccinated. What the governor is saying about her push to get everyone the shot. In the community, we felt this was the right time to do this. And coronavirus policies getting stricter. The local gym now requiring vaccinations. Last week was certainly a warm start to fall, but this week, different story. I'll tell you about it. First warning weather, it's coming up. NBC5 News at 6 starts now. Thanks for joining us tonight at 6 o'clock. I'm Brian Collery. And I'm Alice King. Tonight, Burlington City Council will be voting on a million dollar plan that would help the Burlington Police Department. NBC5's Brianna Borgie joins us from outside of City Hall with more on what the plan would do. Brianna. Alice, Brian, Mayor Mara Weinberger and Acting Police Chief John Murad have outlined a strategy for recruiting and retaining officers at the Burlington Police Department, but they're going to need a lot of money to make it happen. They're asking the City Council to approve $1.12 million for retention incentives and $150,000 for recruitment incentives. This stabilization plan would be funded by American Rescue Plan funds, which Mayor Weinberger says would be a, quote, significant deployment of available federal dollars. Now we know the mayor will be making comments at tonight's meeting, and we'll have more updates to bring you at 10 and 11. We're live in Burlington tonight. Brianna Borgi, NBC5 News. Brianna, thanks. A report of suspicious activity last night on UVM's campus. It led to an hours long shelter in place for everyone inside Harris Millis complex. NBC 5's Kristen Ray is live in Burlington and she spoke with students and the chief of police and has the very latest. Kristen. Yes, Brian and Alice, although things on campus seem like they're back to normal right now, some students are telling me they still have some concerns over safety. Coming to breakfast yeah. was kind of weird, especially because they said they didn't find anything, so it kind of left me wondering, well, is, there, is it still dangerous? UVM Chief of Police Tim Billadu says a caller saw two men inside of the Harris Mills complex and was worried one of them was holding a gun behind the other. But when police showed up and investigated, no gun or weapon was found. So we felt reasonably assured that, okay, something happened here, we don't know exactly what it is. Uh, we don't believe there's a threat right now. We've researched everything. There's nothing to corroborate, you know, the initial information. And uh, so we um, then set out another alert, opening the place back up. But an earlier glitch in UVM's campus alert system had some students learning about the incident on social media before they did from UVM. 45 minutes after, like the supposed gunmen or whatever the interaction was happened, like I would have liked to know maybe five minutes, not 45 minutes, just safety wise. Once the alert did go through, it left some students worried about their friends and reminded others of a similar emergency alert sent in an email on September 20th, reporting a male voice yelling he had a gun and would shoot people near Virtue Field two days earlier. One of my good friends lives in Millis, so I was kind of like concerned about her and just the fact that she was in a shelter in place. and. It's just not a feeling that you want to have like on a campus where you think you're safe. The CEO of Margolis Healy and Associates, who specialize in campus safety and security, recommends all universities take steps to make sure those kinds of glitches don't happen. Institutions should be testing their system on a regular basis. Um, uh, normally that's at least monthly um, to get a good sense for not only whether or not the system is working the way it is intended to work, but also to ensure proficiency. And while UVM police is actively investigating exactly what happened on Sunday night, they're encouraging students to reach out to their department directly if they have any additional information. I'm live in Burlington, Kristen Ray, NBC5 News. Arrested for calling the emergency room at Alice Hyde Medical Center and threatening staff. New York State Police say 23-year-old Kyle Crump made multiple threats in early July. On the way to the Essex County Jail, police say he broke the door handle of the patrol car. He's facing multiple charges. Crump was already wanted on two warrants from last year.
Now to the latest on the pandemic. The number of new cases in our region continues to stay high, and now every county in Vermont is in the CDC's high transmission category, which means in the past week there have been more than 100 cases per 100,000 people in that county, even if the counties don't have that many people. Our entire region now at this level, the CDC recommends indoor masking regardless of vaccination status. Turning to the latest coronavirus case counts across our region in Vermont, 197 new cases reported today. The health department telling us 36 people are in the hospital. Seven of them are in the ICU. We're still waiting on an update from health officials in New Hampshire tonight. And in northern New York, 14 new cases reported today in Franklin County. Since Friday, there have been 115 new cases reported in Clinton County, 146 in St. Lawrence County, and one more person has died from the virus there. 56 new cases and one new death in Essex County since Thursday. Today, New York Governor Kathy Hochul launching a new outreach program specifically to ensure more accessibility to the COVID-19 booster shots. So we want to make sure that you know booster shots are going to be available, free booster shots at your pharmacies, your doctor's offices, clinics, and locations all over the site. So all you have to do is text your zip code to get this down, everybody, 438-829, text that, and we'll show you one of the uh, locations right near you. But also just consult with your health care providers as well. And today marks the governor's deadline for healthcare workers to be vaccinated. She's urging them to get the COVID-19 vaccine if they haven't already. NBC 5's Elena Barilla is in our Plattsburgh studio tonight with more on what the governor is saying. Elena. Well, the governor sent out a release over the weekend addressing a potential issue of staffing shortages because of this mandate. She says she's fully prepared to sign an executive order to declare a state of emergency that would help healthcare facilities with staffing. That would include allowing healthcare professionals licensed in other states or countries, recent grads or those who are retired to practice here and deploying medically trained National Guard members. She says the mandate is something that's, quote, common sense and will stop the spread of the virus in its tracks. We'll be nation leading with our mandate, which strikes at midnight tonight when everyone is expected in a hospital in the state of New York or a health care facility to have been vaccinated. I believe that California is going to follow suit in a couple of weeks and the president's guidance goes into effect in late October. But we are hit the first, we we're hit the hardest, and I want to be the first to say we're over this. Workers in hospitals and nursing homes must have their first shot by today and by October 7th that will include those who work in home care, hospice and adult care facilities. We reached out to multiple multiple health care facilities across the region today in the North Country and none of them got back to us by the time of our deadline. Live in the Plattsburgh studio, Elena Barilla, NBC5 News. Elena, thanks. Schools in Springfield, Vermont closed today after the district there saw multiple positive COVID cases over the weekend. The superintendent says about a quarter of students in the school district are in quarantine right now and that many of those students are waiting for results. The Springfield School District does require masks for students and staff inside and outside in crowded spaces. Turning to the weather now, you're taking a live look from our camera in South Burlington. Looks pretty gloomy out there. <laughs> First warning, Chief wow. Meteorologist Tom Messner is in the Weather Center. Tom, that's kind of the theme of the day today. I was going to say, I don't even know where that thing is pointing. I know. You can't even tell it's so <laughs> cloudy and we've got areas of fog and yeah, we've got a little bit of rain. In fact, let's kind of key in on that. A lot of it is right along the northern tier. And when I say a lot, I mean, none of this is super heavy at this hour. Really wasn't throughout the day. I mean, I saw some certainly moderate rain earlier and you see little dots like this right at the very end of I-89 right along the Canadian border here. At Franklin, we've got some rain coming down over toward Richford, but none of this is super heavy. And then back into the northern Champlain Valley itself, places like Alberg and also Isle Lamotte looking at some rain and yeah, right along Route 11 here. We've got a little bit here and there and then kind of another chunk over toward Redford. You could follow this back just south of Plattsburgh and also Potsdam. So here's the thing I should say uh, Potsdam and Canton. So if you take a look upstream, we've got a little more rain out there. So we'll keep the chance for a couple of rain showers in the forecast for you tonight. You probably have noticed turned out to be on the chilly side, certainly compared to what last week was all about and temperatures won't change much, but I will tell you the sun comes out. We'll give you a timeline on that and when you can expect rain again. First warning weather. It's all coming up. All right, Tom, thanks. The worst shortage in years, how you can help the Red Cross and what they'll give you in return. 